Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now your host, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in New York City. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the event, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, my host George Gilbert. Our next guest is Cube alum, former entrepreneur, now VP and general manager at Teradata, Justin Boardman. Welcome back to theCUBE. Great Thank to you. see you again. Great to be back. So I brought that up in the intro about you being an entrepreneur now at the big company because really this kind of also maps the contrast to the Hadoop ecosystem. Mm -hmm. This year is to me the seminal moment where we put the line in the sand saying, you know what, guys, we still got to do some futuristic stuff. We still got to innovate and invent and innovate, but People are writing checks and it's time to step up and deliver value. If you don't deliver value, you don't get paid. If you don't get paid, you'll be out of business. Yep. So you can raise all the money you want, pay $2 to buy a sale, which companies have tried to do in the sure. past. Yep. Those days are over. Yep. So you've kind of been on both sides. You've seen the startup world, you know the hustle, you know the game. Yep. Now you're on the big co, and you got to still hustle, but you have clients to answer to. Yep. What is going on? What is the state of the market that you see? And then what's Teradata up to? Give us the update. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're absolutely right. It's time for Hadoop to grow up and get real, and uh, and and likewise, you know, the Hadoop-related vendors have to have to start to build real business models around around uh, Hadoop. Um, you know, a, as it pertains to us, I think one of the things that's so exciting for us is seeing how many existing Teradata customers are also using Hadoop, and how can we help kind of foster uh, that collaboration and that ability to kind of work with data where it lives. And some of that data is in Teradata, some of that data is in Hadoop. And you know, a big reason for our investment in Presto is to really produce an enterprise quality, enterprise grade SQL solution for Hadoop. And a lot of that comes from our heritage at Hadapt, uh, which, which was acquired by Teradata, and really trying to make that work within um, you know, a real enterprise uh, uh, environment. Um, and so that's, that's what we're doing. So uh, the other thing that we've been talking about that's kind of not related to this show in big data, but it's, it intersects with, is the cloud, cloud native concept. Mm -hmm. So you know, the unicorns are out there, they, as they say, or big data corns, calling them here, uh, Cloudera is one. But the reality is there's companies like Airbnb, there's companies like Dropbox, you got yep. Netflix, you got Facebook, you got Google. These are web scale companies native in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So the hybrid of cloud is driving this notion that the cloud native apps will be a big user and customer, if you will, of big data analytics, machine learning. So I got to, with that as context, what has you guys done with, a, with your Presto announcement and how does that relate to the relevance of a customer who wants to write a check? Look, I'm going to do mobile, it's got to be real time, I need to synchronous, I want API integration, yep. I want direct connect internet, I got quality of service, I need to put policy in there, which we heard from Cisco. This is the new normal. Yep. What's your take on all that? How do you guys uh, evolve that with Presto? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts with a need to have something that can run at internet scale, which was one of the things that attracted us to Presto in the first place. Obviously, Facebook uses it on 300 petabytes of data. They have 10,000 users hitting uh, their Presto uh, environment every month. Um, so it had a great foundation. And then I think the role that we play in all of this is trying to help bring to bear those enterprise features that, that you mentioned. The, the things that you know, traditional enterprises need, things like security and, and governance. And this week we announced a brand new ODBC and JDBC drivers, uh, which is really essential to actually using BI tools uh, against data in Hadoop. Uh, and so I think that those are all good examples of where we're trying to mature Presto and provide a real kind of enterprise grade solution uh, that that regular companies can use. Uh, you know, not everyone has armies of developers to kind of maintain an open source project, so we want to produce something that uh, that is well packaged. So what's the ease of use there? Because when I hear Facebook, Airbnb, and these companies, we know they're hackers. They yep. have a lot of expertise and tend to build their own. Yep. Not every enterprise can build their own, so they want ease of use. They do. <laughs> they want the easy button. Yep. I want to stand it up very easily. Yep. I want agile, I want iteration. That lifecycle management software. How does that fit into the old school 
models. Certainly Teradata has been around for many years. Yep. How does that all come together? Yeah, I mean that's exactly the value that we think we can add to the ecosystem. We think the the, the gaps are, are happen to be our strengths. So uh, you know, in the case of easy installation, that was the release we did which in June. Which gaps are you referring to? So, you know, installation is certainly an important one. You know, how do you even evaluate these tools if they're hard to use and hard to deploy? So, uh, we built a very simple, uh, easy to use installer. I've used it myself. Uh, we, we allow customers to download from our site um, a VM sandbox versions of Presto, so they can even run it on their laptop in a self-contained environment and experience it firsthand very quickly. Um, you know, things like the ODBC driver, which is not a sexy feature of a database, and, and it's probably a, uh, you know, taken for granted in most traditional uh, mature database systems, but uh, in this world, really important that you have a real ODBC driver that allows you to connect BI tools, which, you know, to your earlier point, that's, that's how a business analyst wants to interact with data, is through a, through a tool. Um, and Tableau and, and Click and MicroStrategy and so forth are great examples of tools that, that you can now use with Presto. So Justin, the, we were talking earlier about how databases take a long time, like in enterprise software, to mature, to yeah. harden, and to scale. Um, now we know Facebook has some talented engineers and you're becoming the commercial sponsor. How did you get to this scale so fast? From what we understand, the team at, at Facebook's pretty small. Mm -hmm. You know, how'd you make such progress? Yeah, so it's a, they have about a dozen engineers working on this at Facebook. We've added uh, close to another 20 to the project. Uh, Netflix has also been contributing, Airbnb's been contributing, so there's certainly a community around it and, and one that's growing. Uh, Treasure Data also uh, uh, has been adding um, uh, software to, to the project. Um, you know, I think the, the speed with which we've moved has been, uh, well, initially driven by the, the Facebook team. They, they are uh, really, really good developers, and they had the benefit of, of starting from scratch with a, a very clean architecture. And that, that clean architecture with really no technical debt has allowed it uh, to, to make it very easy for us to kind of add to that and expand um, that software quickly. But I don't want to suggest that Presto is a complete database by, by any means at this point. Uh, you know, there's still uh, SQL coverage to be added. There's still enterprise features like security that have to be added. You know, I think towards the end of 2016, you'll see this start to really crystallize and become a, a more complete uh, system. You know, I think we're in year four now. Uh, I think Kurt Monash talks about it takes about six years to, to build a complete database. I think you know, as we get into uh, you know, year five, you'll start to, to really see that come to fruition. So, so let's, talk about, let's talk about Teradata, big picture. Okay, the market's certainly disrupted. You guys have recognized that the world is moving to lower price points and more cloud native. Yep. Um, what's been the customer reaction, I mean, to that? I mean, you guys are under a lot of pressure from customers. What are you hearing? How are you responding? Can you talk about that? Sure. Uh, I mean, I think it's different use cases at this point. I think uh, Teradata is a very high performance database system uh, on performance, on SQL functionality, on just stability and robustness. You know, there's really nothing that can compare to that. And so for real mission critical analytic uh, applications and, and data warehousing applications, uh, Teradata plays a, a really important role. But I think what we're seeing is increasingly customers are also using Hadoop. Um, and, uh, and so I think that's, that's really just a, a greenfield opportunity and one that Teradata really wants to be a part of, hence you know, the Presto involvement. And then we also have technology that we call Query Grid, which I'm sure uh, we've talked about on this show in the past, which allows you to query between Teradata and Hadoop. And so we think that kind of brings it all together and allows you to have a more holistic view of all of your data where it lives. Justin, what's the top conversations you've been having this week at the show? Obviously, this is a kind of a coming together of the ecosystem, sixth year of, of us being at Duke World, the first year is kind of like kind of the founding fathers uh, prior to the Cube kind of being founded. We've seen the evolution. What's your take? Because it seems to be this jockeying, we call it the NASCAR race, right? Right. Like everyone's kind of jockeying in the pack, waiting for someone to slingshot out. That just never happened. Instead, you've seen the big guys come in. Yep pivoting just as fast as, not just as fast, but pivoting just like startups. So yep. the benefits of big data and cloud is you can be agile. Yeah, absolutely. So faster for the startups, but not as slow for the big guys. So you're seeing Oracle, you're seeing Cisco, you're seeing right. IBM, you've got HP, right. you see Teradata. Is there room to play in the ecosystem? And what are the conversations that you're hearing? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting point. I think you know one thing that uh, that becomes increasingly clear to me, I think, over time, is how uh, the Hadoop distribution wars 
uh, continue to kind of bifurcate and, and fork, if you will, and, and go down their separate paths. And, and each distribution is building kind of their own stack of projects and tools specific to their distribution. So interestingly, I think one of the reasons customers got interested in Hadoop in the first place was, you know, it's uh, no vendor lock-in, it's, uh, you know, very low switching costs, at least that was the perception. And now you're seeing, I think, each of those distributions slowly start to kind of build their, their moats, uh, if you will. Uh, and, and interestingly, that's been one of the reasons or one of the appeals to Presto is because it's distribution agnostic. It kind of is insulating the customer as, as these distributions go their separate ways. So it allows them to, to run on either distribution. They could switch distributions down the road, which, which has been an interesting uh, observation. Um, we had the uh, um, VP of Marketing from uh, HP Big Data on talking about Vertica mm -hmm. and some of the new use cases where data is either living in the cloud or coming into the cloud in a streaming form, machine data time series. Um, are you seeing like a shift from the traditional, let's put a, you know, a data weight, a data lake that complements data warehouse into sort of new use cases where you're working with streams of data and you, know, you have to make constant operations, uh, it's not always batch. Absolutely, I think that is definitely another trend. What, what, is, what are some of those use cases? What do they look like? Um, I, I mean, I think just uh, your point about having data uh, sort of continuously streaming in, you know, Kafka, I think, is becoming very popular. Um, uh, it, you know, it, it was actually an interesting feature that we learned when we were first speaking with the, the Facebook team is that they had built a connector for Kafka from Presto so that you could actually query some of that data within, within Kafka itself. So I think you know, that Kafka and, and tools like that are becoming increasingly important into that, that pipeline, into the data pipeline. As a, just a quick follow up, um, so Kafka is really you know, at, the, at the message, message uh, forwarding, I guess the, in the form of a, a log, commit, distributed commit log, just all right, a little too techy, but <laughs> the stream processors like Spark Streaming, like yep. Flink and uh, Samza, they have analytics themselves. How do you see stream processors living next to, next to um, data warehouses? Mm -hmm. I mean, I see them as complementary as well. I think you're going to have a need for that kind of real-time uh, uh, ability to, to analyze that, that data in, in a streaming fashion, but I think you're also going to be aggregating a lot of data over time, uh, and that's more your, your data lake concept uh, or your data warehouse concept, and I think those are uh, use cases that, that they're just different use cases, in my opinion. So I think both of these systems will live uh, together as different steps within that pipeline. Do you see, because right now the, the streaming data, it's like hot topic, yep. but you know, not a lot of production, right. except bleeding edge. How do you see the sort of, over the next few years, the, the relative volume of data between those two types? Fully agree, there's, there's history, Mm -hmm. Data, you know, and there's fresh data. Mm -hmm. But how should we think about sort of the relative, the relative volume? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's still early days for a lot of those those platforms that you mentioned. Um, I think they will take time to to continue to mature. I think uh, you know, again, for kind of the business analyst, if we talk about that user for a moment, I think they're still you know very much. Um, have a preference to use a tool, to use something like Tableau or Click or, or what have you. And I think those are, are more ideally suited for a, a more traditional analytic database front end, if you will. Uh, so I think they will be uh, still communicating with data in, uh, you know, through something like Presto or another SQL and Hadoop solution or a, a data warehouse itself. And so I think there's still a lot of value there. I would say the weight is still in that direction, but I think uh, the, the streaming side is, is certainly supplemental to that. Okay, final question. What's your bumper sticker for this year's Hadoop World, Strata Hadoop, Big Data NYC? For the, for the people writing checks, what's your bumper sticker to them if you had to lay out a tagline for this year? Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, like you said in the opener, I, I think it's, it's time for Hadoop to, to get real and um, you know, become a, an integral part of the enterprise. Um, uh, that's not a catchy bumper sticker phrase. I have to think it's about it. It's longer than the last bumper real. sticker we had. Yeah. It's like a paragraph. Was it? Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it could be an image, kind of like on Twitter. You know, 140 characters and you put an image. <laughs> no, but that, that's good. That, but basically get real. Yeah, yeah, I think so. 
All right, well, Justin, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, former entrepreneur, now VP GM at Teradata. Uh, thanks for sharing your insight here on theCUBE. We'll be right back with more here live in New York City, theCUBE, after this short break.